This could be the biggest story in human history. I'm even wearing my Boba Fett shirt because I was like, aliens? And it could be proven to be true? Finally? Uh, and I was just thinking, what, what can I wear? <laughs> if I seem a little excited, it's because I am. Because this seems like the first time we're actually going to have credible witnesses, evidence, et cetera, to prove that for the past, you know, what we've been hearing about for the past 70 years or so about the U.S. recovering alien vehicles and studying them and trying to reverse engineer them is true. And if you haven't heard about this yet, I'm not surprised because it's pretty much brand new out. I think it kind of got the, the story got broken yesterday. Today is uh, June 6th, 2023. So sometime yesterday, kind of the news broke. Uh, I saw it on a news feed today and I started immediately searching everywhere and I'm not really finding many of the major media outlets talking about this yet. I did see a little snippet on Fox News. I saw a few other sites. There's some of the online you know, news organizations that are talking about it. And I was thinking, why are people not freaking out about this? And then I thought about the long history of you know UFOs and everything. And I'm like, it kind of makes sense. There should be a healthy skepticism there. So I am optimistic because of the source of this information. So uh, let's look at the article that I was reading uh, and was reported by Leslie Keene and Ralph Blumenthal. Uh, the same reporters that sort of broke a few years ago, that military footage where the military pilots were chasing a UFO. <laughs> Target? No, I took an auto track. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow. Look at that, man. That gave it some credibility, but then when you see how this whole story came about, there is this guy here you'll see here on the, uh, the page, David Charles Grush. I don't know how to say his name, uh, but he is the whistleblower. Uh, and it says here, uh, he's a decorated former combat officer in Afghanistan, is a veteran of the National Geopolitical Intelligence Agency and the National Reconnaissance Office. He served as the Reconnaissance Office's representative to the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force from 2019 to 2021. And from late 2021 to July 2022, he was the NGA's co-lead for UAP analysis and its representative to the task force. So this is a guy in the know, in the thick of it, not some low level, <laughs> you know, lunatic, you know, that's easy to write off. This guy's in the know. And he's claiming that these agencies or these secret sort of organizations within the agencies have illegally withheld information from Congress. And uh, so he is whistleblower and he's using the official whistleblower program in place at the federal government uh, to release all this information. So sometimes the term whistleblower gets used as, oh, it's somebody kind of coming out saying I'm blowing the whistle. But no, he's using the official whistleblower program, which even lends more credibility to it. He's basically confirming uh, things that have people have been saying for decades. So let's play a little clip from a teaser uh, from a uh, news nation that uh, he's apparently on Sunday, they're, they're doing a whole interview with him. So let me play a little clip of that. He's a decorated U.S. veteran and a former high-ranking intelligence officer at the Pentagon. And now, for the first time on camera, He's blowing the whistle on something extraordinary. There's a sophisticated disinformation campaign. What our government is hiding from you and the world. As fantastical as that sounds, it's true. What is the truth about UFOs? In a worldwide television exclusive, he talks to News Nation. We are not alone. Sunday at 9, 8 central. So let's uh, play a little clip uh, from uh, the, what I found on Fox News. 
uh, like I said, I've searched all sort of the media media websites, and this was sort of the best response that I found from a, you know, a, a major media outlet. Let's see what they have to say here. Now we begin with a whistleblower's shocking new claims about our country's research into UFOs. Last May, Congress held its first hearing on UFOs in over 50 years. Intelligence experts testified at the time about hundreds of encounters with unidentified objects and gave Americans a glimpse into some of the military's apparent run-ins with unidentified aircraft. Now, an Air Force veteran and former high-ranking intelligence official is blowing the whistle on an alleged UFO retrieval program, which he says has been run by the U.S. government for decades. David Grush claims the government is now in possession of partial and fully intact aircraft of non-human origin. And several current members of the program have corroborated some of those allegations with the Office of the Inspector General. Grush says that information on the deeply covert program has been withheld from Congress and is now speaking out about this secretive program. These are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft if you will. Uh, it's probably not the right parlance, but uh, no kidding, non-human, exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. We have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. Mind blown. Like... Yes, I know that there's been other people, a lot of you who may follow this sort of topic, remember and have heard of over the years since the late 80s, I believe, a guy named Bob Lazar or Robert Lazar claims to have worked in Area 51 and was part, you know, reverse engineering vehicles and gave very detailed description of what they were like. Um, but, you know, it did get some media attention back then, and he's got a lot of media attention over the years, and other kind of similar people have. But the guy also is kind of not credible in many ways. Like, and, and you know, people have always said, well, has it been a smear campaign from those trying to keep it secret, you know, or is he just a little bit different? And <laughs> as I imagine, someone who is a physicist that supposedly researches alien technology might tend to be <laughs> um you know they're sort of stereotyped that way in in hollywood so maybe there's some truth to that i don't know but you know uh so i think people have kind of been hoping for a credible whistleblower at a high ranking level to finally come out and this appears to be the case I don't even know how to respond to this. <laughs> My feeling is if it's confirmed to be true and there's undeniable evidence that the U.S. and other nations have retrieved and been studying alien vehicles of non-human origin, I'm trying to quote what he says in that uh, little interview there, that it will blow people's mind for about three days and everybody will forget about it <laughs> and just go, haven't we always known that? M most people on planet Earth at this point believe, I don't remember the exact statistics, but the majority of the population believes there is life or the possibility of life on other planets. The big challenge that I have always struggled with that people who are much smarter about, you know, science and physics and everything, you know, that they've pointed out is, the distance between them. And in my mind, I'm always thinking, well, if you're an alien species, or if you're like us in humans and you send out a Voyager satellite and a thousand years later, or tens of thousands of years later, somehow miraculously that vehicle or that spacecraft gets sucked into the orbit of a, of a planet that has an intelligent <laughs> species and maybe it crashes into earth like a lot of you know satellites eventually kind of deorbit and they you know without some sort of propulsion and they'll eventually crash you know maybe something like that happened maybe it came in our direct trajectory and just a one in a trillion chance that these things hit our earth um i i still find it hard to believe that some aliens in another planet maybe even in another galaxy had the ability to recognize there was intelligent life on our planet and they sent a, a probe or something out um 
I find the wording of non-human alien vehicle interesting. So I'm going to be interested to see how that full interview rolls out on Sunday <laughs> and, and kind of find out what, what that means. But uh, basically, you know, that has been the challenge, you know, that the sheer amount of time, even traveling at near light speed would take a very long time for vehicles to reach us. Uh, I, I think, you know, the closest possibility would be at least a hundred or so years at near light speed and anything less than that's just going to add more and more and more time. Communication between those two, you know, uh, intelligent societies could happen within, you know, a couple hundred years or hundred plus years. So it's possible, uh, in, a, in, in a close proximity like that. But the odds are just so high that it seems, you know, that skepticism should be sort of your first default. Uh, but the fact that these stories have been coming out for, you know, since I think 1947 was Roswell and have pretty much persisted ever since. And the similarities between, you know, a lot of sort of leaks from Area 51 or from some of these secret programs have a pretty consistent feel to them. And, but then when you read, which other people who have worked for these agencies have said over the years, but when you read what he talks about, that there have been active disinformation programs that our government and supposedly governments around the world have engaged in to make it all seem like a conspiracy and to discredit sources and to always have a convenient explanation for it. And I think probably the same questions you've asked. How have they hidden this for so long, so well, and why? If we have this, if we have vehicles, whatever that means, <laughs> he says you could call them spacecraft. So I'm thinking probes, satellites, something like that, of non-human origin, that either means there's another intelligent species living on Earth. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe there's a secret society of of gorillas <laughs> that are launching probes into space, and we they've been keeping that secret. Or there's some other form of intelligent life that was able to create these vehicles and have them end up on Earth. And there's a lot of questions about that. Why why is it always in the U.S. Why, you know, hasn't, you know, why haven't these things been coming out? And the reasons you typically hear for, you know, how have they kept it secret? Well, you compartmentalize. And part of this report talks about that compartmentalization. You keep certain things secret. Uh, I know Bob Lazar and others who have claimed, I, I literally met a guy in 1986, I believe it was. I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I was, and it was probably 1986, I was a senior in high school, and I was taking an economics class, and we were learning how to invest in stocks and, and that sort of thing, and so I was just kind of looking, oh man, I have a little bit of money, I want to look for like a, a startup or something to invest in, and I'm reading the classified ads, those of you old enough to remember what classified ads were in the old days, come out in the newspaper, and I see this tiny little ad, nothing fancy, it's three or four lines that said, you know, this inventor has a new product that he's seeking investment in. And I thought, you know what? I'm a high school kid doing this. I'm going to call the guy and see what he has to talk about. He ended up coming to, to our house. I told my dad to come in and listen to him. And he starts telling me his background. Uh, and he starts talking about his, his, his product idea was um, uh, disposable children's, but let's just call it Huggies. Everybody knows what Huggies are. That's basically what he was talking. He brought over little prototypes of these, you know, and he gave a little presentation about how diapers are used and you got to undo the tabs. And you know, when you got somebody, a kid potty training, they need these sort of pull-ups or Huggies. And I was like, I don't know anything about raising kids. I had a little brother. I'd changed his diaper a few times. I was like, yeah, that seems like a pretty good idea. And my dad thought it was a pretty good idea. And I don't know... It, what happened with that guy or, you know, if he had the patent, I don't know. All I know is that a few years later from the balcony of my house, we could see a massive Huggies plant that made 
the the pull-ups. I, I said Huggies. I meant pull-ups. <laughs> That's what they made there, apparently. And I'm like, is that coincidence? <laughs> anyway, so my dad got a little skeptical of the guy because he starts telling us his history, his personal history. He claimed that he worked for a top, one of the top secret uh, agencies. He starts telling me, he's like, oh yeah, I've, you know, that big secret underground tunnel that the Air Force has in Colorado or whatever, been there. Uh, you know, flying saucers, UFOs. He's like, you know, hovercraft. He's like, 100% legit. He's like, everything I saw was developed by humans. He didn't claim that there was any sort of alien technology that he had seen. But what he did say was that he was brought in to work on very specific pieces of projects and was only given the very specific information that he needed to do his job. So he's like, I never had the grand picture. He told me, and, and at the time, none of this stuff had been declassified, but he's like, oh yeah, we had flying saucers. A lot of the ones that are cited, they were, you know, the Air Force or this, this you know, the secret agency at Area 51 and other places around the country were working on and developing. And I remember one that he, he told me about that, that he had either worked on or been part of was a little one-man hovercraft that had a little railing around it that the idea was that a soldier could stand on that and just by leaning, zoom across the battlefield. And he's like... It, it failed for a number of reasons. And I remember telling all my friends about that. Well, now you can go look that up. That, that actually exists. There's photos of it. And I'm like, so all these years later, when some of that stuff became declassified, he's just rattling off about it. And I'm like, dad, this guy's stories are amazing. He's like, yeah, but if he had all this top secret clearance, why is he just telling random people that he just met all this top secret information? I'm like, good point. But over the years, I've known that a lot of very intelligent people are a little bit what we describe off their rocker or a little bit <laughs> like their, their brains are so much more advanced or their, the way they think and process stuff comes off a little bit odd to somebody who's not at that level. Right. I mean, Einstein's a pretty good example of that. Uh, you know, he was a little bit odd. <laughs> so why should we be surprised? And that stuck with me. And, you know, he talked about a lot of other things that were kind of just crazy that maybe one day I'll get into. Uh, but it, it just, uh, we never did invest in that, in his thing. I don't know whatever happened to him, <laughs> but, uh, I was fascinated by that concept. And so that personal experience combined with what I've read and heard and seen with that whole sort of, are there aliens? Do we have UFOs? Was Roswell, Roswell actually alien? It, I saw or I met someone who claimed to have that experience. And at that time, we didn't have the internet. I don't even think that sort of stuff was covered in any sort of book or encyclopedia that I had access to. So when I would tell people about it, their immediate response was, well, the guy, they were he's like, oh, wow, that's amazing. Or they're like, well, the guy sounds like a whack job. Why would he give away top secret information that had not been released yet? And I'm like, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> but years later, Everything he said that he participated in has been confirmed. I've seen photos of it. It's been declassified, all these programs, the space, the flying saucers, the spaceships, etc. So for most of the time when I hear about UFO stuff, I've always thought, well, it's probably just secret technology that we are developing and we're keeping it secret because it gives us a tactical advantage against our enemies whatever they may, whoever they may be. And, you know, it, proprietary information, developing, I mean, even Marvel, when they make a movie, they keep it extremely top secret. So there are advantages to keeping things compartmentalized and putting threats out there and keeping things secret. And so if you think, you know, a company like Marvel, when they're making a movie and developing something can keep that secret and there's hundreds, potentially thousands, you've seen the credits at the end of a movie, thousands of people who keep everything under wraps, uh, you think, well, if you compartmentalize that information and, and nobody has the big picture except for a very small group of people, and then you have a disinformation organization that says, anytime this stuff comes out, you need to spin it off. And even those people, 
in those disinformation organizations probably aren't there. They don't think they're hiding the truth. Like that wouldn't work. They'd be like, oh, I'm hiding the truth here. No, they'd be like, hey, somebody, one of their superiors comes in and says, hey, there's this thing that came out. People are calling it a UFO, an alien. It's not. We need to get information out there. And so then they put out this disinformation, not even realizing it's disinformation. That's how I would do it. <laughs> a very small group of people know the full picture, and then they sort of control it from there. And this guy is one of the people that had the big picture. Maybe he didn't have the whole big picture, but he's... I mean, you you read his credentials, You've, or you heard me tell you his credentials, <laughs> or you'll hear about his credentials, and then the people that are also supporting and saying, yeah, what he's saying is true. That's why I say this could be the biggest story, not because he's the first one to say it, but just because of it feels like, seems like, and I hope that he's credible and he has this, he's sort of one of these people that has that bigger picture that we've never had before who's kind of come out and and is saying yeah this stuff is this is real we have i can't even say it without smiling we have parts and in some cases entire vehicles of non-human origin maybe there's mermaids in the sea that are making these things. So I'm going to be very interested to see where this story goes and we'll definitely make a follow up once it goes a little bit bigger, but I just could not, not talk about this, even though not very many people will see my video. I just want to be on record talking about it because if it proves to be true, it's going to be very interesting to learn about what we have and <laughs> how much of the information they actually will release to the public that's confirmed true. I, in, the, in, in the Fox News interview, one of the co-hosts uh, says, look, I'm not going to believe it until I have a literal alien sitting right next to me. And I'm just not going to believe it until then. And I understand that sentiment because there has been so much... I hate to use the word, but disinformation. There's been so many questionable sort of, you know, people who've come out and you're like, well, they seem a little bit off there. You know, are they all there? You know, <laughs> are they fantasizing this into believing that it's real? Uh, you know, like uh, I get it. And I'm like, well, how many of those are sort of part of the government disinformation? And how many of them are just people who just, want it to be true so they claim to have been abducted by aliens or whatever worked in this top secret organization because i've always thought ever since i met that guy it's pretty easy for someone to say oh yeah i i worked in area 51 you'll nobody will be able to confirm it because that's the way they offer it i mean anybody can make that claim right and then just kind of think in their own mind like well uh this is the way it worked and come up with a pretty reasonable sounding argument and you know this bob lazar guy that's kind of how he's been written off is he never worked for for you know area 51 or whatever they call their secret code name is for that place and there's no way to prove that he did or didn't because it's top secret <laughs> so any sort of person out there could make those claims and as evidence that they worked there the inability to prove that they worked there is evidence that they did if that made any sense whatsoever so whenever you're talking about a very super top secret organization uh you know we see it in spy movies a lot you know they like i work for the cia or whatever and they'll deny it because i work on a you know black ops whatever and you see that they get you know burned or whatever and everybody denies that they ever worked for the, those spy organizations and i'm like well of course the same thing could happen in something as secretive as proof of alien intelligence. So if it turns out to be true, how will it change the world? Well, as I said in the beginning, I don't think it'll make any difference. <laughs> I think people go, oh, wow, yeah, well, we knew all along, or wow, amazing. They'll be excited about it and want to learn more. Maybe some people will be fearful of it, but... I think the sheer distance, even at light speed, unless some somebody has inv invented a way to warp through space, you don't think we're at any real danger. 
I could be wrong, but I still believe that, you know, the science and the, and the physics that we understand are, give a pretty good argument that we're not at risk of being invaded anytime soon, unless these aliens have been traveling for thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of years to get to our planet. And I'm thinking that's a long journey and a lot of really great planets between us and them. <laughs> they could have stopped at, conquered, and lived on before they get to us. So it either is a close proximity neighbor in space, and I don't know how science, you know, astrophysicists or whoever defines those, I don't know how they define it, but I'm thinking like an Alpha Centauri sort of situation where it's relatively close in terms of, you know, distance in light speed. Um, but that's been one of the big questions is, is, you know, what, what's going to happen? Why, why keep it secret? And people say, well, because then people will, it'll disrupt society, will collapse into chaos and everything. I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe in the 19, late forties, early fifties, maybe, but in today's world, I, I honestly don't think it'll do much more than have people go, ha, we knew it all along. <laughs> and people will be more upset that it was kept secret for so many years than they will be upset that there's proof of alien life. So I'm going to leave that with you. Go check out the, uh, the, the article. Uh, you know, if you're way into this stuff, you might want to watch that News Nation interview with him and then kind of follow the other articles. It'll be interesting to see over the next days, weeks, how the, the major media kind of responds to this, but I'm excited about it. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, letting me sort of share my excitement and interest about this topic with you. Hope you found it enjoyable. If you did, give it a thumbs up <laughs> and hit subscribe if you haven't. I think only my subscribers are watching at this point, so I appreciate those of you who are tuning in. Uh, to these topics, and, and I hope you're enjoying it. And just remember, you are amazing. You're an awesome person. Whatever it is you do in your life for work or not work or, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you matter to people. And there are people who care about you, including me, because you watch my channel. <laughs> so I hope you have a great day and see you on the next video.